Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to a new episode of the Tabletop Engineer. This week I'm going to show you how to make some miniature bookshelves. Uh, I don't know about you, but I can always use them in various settings in my games that I play. The problem I have with bookshelves is they are available pre-made out and about, but sometimes you can only buy like one of a certain size or you don't, you only get a certain size, you can't, there's no variation, or you have to buy them in a kit, which means you get the bookshelf, but you gotta buy other stuff. So what I wanted to do was come up with a, uh, a set of instructions for re recreating uh, a set of bookshelves in various widths and heights and things like that. So I'm gonna show you how I made these little mini bookshelves right here, real cheap, real fast, out of nothing but foam and chipboard plus paint and glue. Let's get to the work table and I'll show you how I made these. All right, for this project, I am going to make three different sizes of bookshelves. I'm gonna make a two inch by two inch approximate, a three inch tall by one inch wide bookshelf, and then a two inch wide by one inch tall bookshelf. All of these shelves are gonna have something in common. All of the sides, tops, and shelves are going to be made from one inch <laughs> from one-eighth inch uh, wide pieces of foam. And the bookshelves are also going to be a one-half inch deep. Okay, from the front to the back will be one-half. And I chose one-half because I have a lot of one-half inch foam, and also I think it just looks proper. I think anything deeper than that looks too deep, and anything shallower just doesn't look right to scale when you put minis next to it. And because this... Uh, width is already set. All we have to do is cut one eighth inch pieces to make all of the frames and the shelves. Now I've totaled up. Um, one thing I'm not going to do is the the base of each bookshelf will not be made out of foam. It will be made out of chipboard towards the end. All right, I have a handful of these slivers that I cut that are all approximately one eighth inch thick and one half inch wide or deep for the bookshelves. Now for the two by two, pretty easy. I'll just cut a whole bunch of two inch and two inch pieces. Now when you assemble this, the width is actually gonna be more like two and a quarter because you have to add the one eighth inch uh, over here and the one eighth inch over here. If I glued the top piece on top of the two sides, then it would be truly two inches wide, but it would be a little bit, it would be two and an eighth inch tall. I would rather have a wider bookshelf than a taller bookshelf. So the first thing I need to do is I need to cut a bunch of two inch pieces and some two inch pieces here for the two inch wide bookshelf. So assuming I'm gonna make, let's say two sets, which would be six bookshelves, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two, which is 14. I need 14 pieces at two inches. So I'm gonna go. I have the 14 pieces. These are two inches long cut. Now what I need to do is I need to make the base of this particular bookshelf. Now remember it's a half inch. So it's a real easy thing to just uh, make a mark here. All of my bookshelves are going to be half inch, so I'm going to go ahead and just make marks at one, at a half, one, and one and a half, and I'll just cut a bunch of bases initially, just sort of, you know, do this sort of assembly line. Because I'm putting the top piece in between the two walls, it's going to extend this to two and a quarter. So I need to cut these to two and a quarter. All right, time to start gluing up. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of hot glue on the chipboard base to put a wall in. Go ahead and glue another piece down here. The reason I'm gluing the walls on or the sides on first, and I'll let me get this one set and I'll show you, is they might angle in a little bit and that's okay. 
because I can pull them out when that glue dries and squeeze this in there. And remember, I'm gonna make the top of the shell flush with the top two sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dab of glue here. And remember, don't touch the nozzle to the foam. Just get the glue on there. Get it in there and glue it on one side and then glue it on the other. And then you have a few seconds to sort of square it up. And as you see, it's standing. Uh, because it's got the, the chipboard on the bottom, it's heavier by a little bit. Chipboard's not all that heavy, but it's just heavy enough that it will stand. The next thing you're going to do is not glue in the shelves. Do not glue in the shelves. Let's go ahead and create the base, uh, the, the backboard. You know it's going to be roughly two and a quarter by two inches tall plus the thickness of the baseboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use, I could measure this out, but it's easier to just mark it with a pen, cut it with scissors, and then trim it as you need it. And you want to glue the chipboard backing so that it is all the way down flush with the ground, not not creating a gap between the base and the backboard. Real simple, just run a fast bead along your chipboard, not too thick, and then just stick it in place. And that should do it. All right. All right, now you have your bookshelf frame. We'll call that the frame. It's not the, uh, the entire bookshelf because we haven't put the shelving in yet. Now at this point, what you can do is you can texture the foam. And what I do is I use one of these wire brushes. Let me show you what it looks like. Looks like this. I got it at the hardware store, I believe. There was a bag of maybe three or four of them. So just put your fingers underneath the foam and just give it some scratches. And if and it may not show up on the video, but believe it or not, there are there are wood textures. Uh, the wood texture is being added to that foam, and uh, it will show up hopefully when I paint it. And there we go. You're also going to want to go ahead and texturize the shelves, maybe just the front half of them. You'll have to make note where it is because you're going to glue the books on the back of these pieces. Now this one's going to have two shelves. So I'm going to texture two of those. And they will go in just like the top piece. They'll be wedged in here. I may have to trim them down because they're sort of bulging. You can see it's sort of bulging right here on this side. So I'm just going to trim that down. Remember, when you're dealing with foam, <laughs> there is all sorts of issues with thickness and width. And it's never going to be perfect. So I know this one's probably going to need to be trimmed down. It will. Don't cut too much. Uh, and that will go in there like so. Yeah, there we go. So this will have three shelves like so. But again, do not glue those shelves in yet. I'm gonna show you why. All right, remember I said don't glue the shelves in yet. And that's because at this point in the game, you need to paint the bookcase and the shelves before we move on to the next step. I've chosen this one called Milk Chocolate. I just like the, I like this particular shade of brown for my bookshelves. You can go darker, you can go lighter, whatever you like. But again, trust me on this, you're going to want to paint the shelves, uh, paint the shelves and the bookcase before you actually uh, glue them in and put books on them. Okay. When it comes to making the books for the bookshelf, remember these books are going to be either put in like a normal book with the spine visible, or they'll be laying flat in a stack, or they'll be leaning. But no matter what you do, chances are you want the spine visible, right? That's how most people put books on bookshelves. So when I was thinking about how I was gonna make these um, bookshelves, I first off started out with chipboard. Now, if you cut a little square or rectangle of chipboard to represent a book, you have a little piece of chipboard. Now you got to paint it. Painting little things like this is tricky. Now you could paint the whole piece of chipboard, but then when you start cutting it, you have to go back and paint the spines. And the spines are kind of the pain because they're going to be sticking out. And who wants to paint a thousand little spines? There are people out there that have done it, but I'm not going to. So instead, what I did was I went to my kid's craft uh, bucket that they have in their room <laughs> And I found these. These are craft sticks, but they're made out of styrofoam, or foam, not styrofoam. They're very soft and bendy, and they come in multiple colors. They are exactly the same type of material 
as you can find in the craft store in these large sheets, all right? Um, I could have bought, gone and bought one of these and all these colors, but thankfully these are small, inexpensive, and easy to cut. And they, I think it was a bag of them for a dollar at the craft store. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. Um, first off, I'm not even going to, uh, I'm not going to use the, the blade. I'm just going to cut these with scissors. What I'm going to want to do is cut a bunch of little books. And I want to do these in various uh, thicknesses, heights, whatever you call them. Uh, I want the books to all look different. So I'm just going to take each color here and I'm just going to cut, you know, cut a bunch of books. Now, to answer your question, which has probably come up, is why are we doing the books before we glue in the shelves? Because when you put in, when you put in a shelf, let me show you real quick. Uh, I'm letting the paint dry, but I'm gonna show this to you. Like this, when you put the first shelf in, no problem. Put the second shelf in, no problem. But when you're trying to glue books down in there, it's gonna be very hard. So what you're gonna wanna do is glue the books on the shelves first and then insert the shelves. Now you can fortunately glue a bunch on the bottom shelf down here. All right, so I now have a bunch of books, little teeny tiny books in here, all right? So now we need to get start making stacks. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna use the hot glue gun. I'm gonna place a bead. I'm gonna make a stack right now. And the, what, the difference between a stack and a run is the stack will be sort of random. It will not be, um, it goes from the bottom down Books can be sort of angled like that piece. Uh, they can look sort of haphazard, just like they were thrown on the shelf and forgotten, sort of. All right, so there's a little there's a little stack of books. And you want to pull the wisps off. You definitely don't want the wisps. They don't add to the effect. Just set them aside. I'm going to make a run now. And I'm going to start with, we'll start with a brown. Start with a big one if you want uh, to sort of make a bookend. So big one, and then you obviously want to change colors. Now these need to be flush on the bottom or as near to it as they can, okay? Now, uh, let's do an angled book. All right, I'm going to start with a brown one. I'm going to build a run of books, maybe four, and then I will put an angled book that's sort of leaning against the other ones. You want to change up the height as much as you can. You know, change up the uh, the height of the books, vary it a little bit. Go short, go then, go tall. Just make it make it stand out. All right. So I have a little bit of a a little run of books here: brown, tan, purple, red, brown. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a leaning book. I'm going to take this. I'm going to sit it down just for a second. Actually, I'm going to hold it up like this. I'm going to lean an orange book. And by lean, you know what I mean. It just lean the book this way. You're only going to glue it at the top. Just put a small dab of glue. And then you're going to have to let the glue dry as best you can. And you're going to eyeball it to make sure that the book is leaning but is still flush with the bottom run of books. All right. I don't know if you can see that all too well, but brown, tan, purple, red, brown, leaning orange book. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these, and then we're gonna return and glue these down onto the painted shelves. And there you go, nothing real fancy. They're not fancy, but they will 
suffice for bookshelves. Now, again, you could go buy some that are, you know, the miniatures, plastic versions. Um, but if you want, if you need more than a couple, I definitely recommend you try and make them. Uh, they look really good, especially after you've applied the wash to it. The wash uh, dulls down the color of the spines that were made out of those foam uh, pieces like this. And again, I, I don't even know how to price something like this. These are probably pennies to make, okay? And if you do an assembly line, you could probably crank out 10 or 20 of these in probably an hour to an hour and a half. Does not take a long time. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, I've got to get back to the table and start making a ton of these. I will be back next week with a new video, a probably more advanced project than these little bookshelves. So please come join me next week for a new project. Uh, if you are not a subscriber to Bexham's Bazaar magazine, please check the description below. Go out and download the free issue number six so you can see what the magazine is about. And if you like what you see, please consider being a subscriber. It's only $2 a month. Every, every issue that comes out is usually pushing 100 pages. And it's just, um, I have some great contributors who are, who are helping uh, provide content for the magazine. So I hope you like it. And then finally, uh, the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. If you're not a member, please come join. We have discussions over there. We share our projects. And every Wednesday, typically, I do a live event at around 1 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes it's crafting. Sometimes it's painting minis. You just never know. All right. Hope you like this project. I'd love to see your final results for bookshelves. This is DM Jim. I will see you next week with a new project. Take care.